I'll call to order our city council meeting. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sylvia, roll call. Mayor Clark Indicott. Here. Council President Harris. Here. Council Kuiper. Here. Council Robinson. Here. Council Garland. Here. Council Young. Here. Thank you. We've got approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Consent agenda, approval of June 27th, 2017, City Council meeting minutes. Approval of July 11th, 2017, City Council meeting minutes. Approval of July 18th, 2017, City Council meeting minutes. Approval of July 25th, 2017, City Council meeting minutes. Resolution 2017-059, appointing Kara Rep to the Planning Commission. Resolution 2017-060, appointing Nancy Taylor to the Budget Committee. Resolution 2017-061, appointing Tyrone Stammers to the Budget Committee. Resolution 2017-062, reappointing Susan Claus to the Budget Committee. Resolution 2017-063, approving explanatory statement for initiative ISHE 2017-1. Do I have a motion to approve consent? I move to approve. Um, actually, Mayor, I'd like to pull an item off consent. Okay. Which item? Uh, the last one, I. Okay, Bob. for what purpose? Uh, just to add some additional language um, for the explanatory statement, which is an exhibit to the resolution. Okay, can we hear? What's the... Um, the additional language is um, in January 2016. In January 2016, the Sherwood City Council referred a measure to the November 2016 election to put in place a ban on all such facilities. By doing so, the City Council also enacted a moratorium on the establishment of these facilities until that election, and then changing an A to a the. Okay. So we've got uh, a little bit of an amendment to um, consent agenda number or sorry, letter I, do uh, I have a motion to approve the amendment to the resolution, letter I? I move that we do so. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, council. Do I have a motion to approve the updated consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, citizen comments, do we have any citizen comments? Sylvia? Patrick Denan. Patrick Denan, are you in the room? Okay, come forward. Go ahead and push the button until it turns green, and then your time will begin. First of all, I want to congratulate you on your uh, new position, getting married. That's interesting. I'm here today, I'm concerned. I, I just received from your um, city recorder uh, a rejection of my four public records, and Josh instructed her to, to do that. And I'm really surprised because I um, worked hard to do this, and I had people back me up. And um, it seems like the city council has been instructed to be quiet in talking with me because of the city municipal court issues that I have brought forth to you and you don't think that they're city business. 
I again request that we have a hearing with city council to discuss those. I have provided you with three letters, and each one of those letters outlined what I felt Judge Morris did illegally and against the law, yet I have seen no response from the city council. And your city charter, chapter 36, A and B, says that you are responsible for the hiring and firing of the city uh, uh, city judge and the, and the municipal court. You are not in line with the law, evidently, because your attorney has provided me with four pages of outline, and it didn't say traffic violation, it's traffic crime. And the law says under 810375 that you need to be a court of records to hear traffic violations. I have asked for the city and you folks to provide me with proof that you can provide the law, the, the law that shows that you have the right to take us public members and collect money from traffic violations. But I'm concerned about this because we, the public, have the right to get information. And I am very fortunate that I have people behind me helping me. But here is the letter I received from your city recorder. It says, based on the city understanding of your request, they do not appear to fall within the scope of public records request under ORS 192.00. If you believe if you believe this determination is in error, I do, and if you would like to make any changes, this is the second time I've submitted to it, um, please do it, because they, they say, please submit new records. Well, if you, I'm amazed that a professional city recorder doesn't know the law or that the city attorney is skirting the law, but under ORS 195005, it says, Definitions. Definitions under public records, number five, it says, means any information that is prepared, owned, or used, or retained by state agencies, political subdivisions, which you are, uh, relating to activities, transactions, or functions of the state agency or political subdivision, and is necessary to satisfy the physical, the legal, the administrative, or historical policies required or needs the state agency or public subdivision needs, um, and that's it. Why aren't you giving me the records? Show me that you have the authority to hear traffic violations, not traffic crimes, records. You're collecting a whole lot of money, and you're telling me that it isn't city business. Then you're telling me that an, an officer of the court, the judge that you hired, turned around and told me that I couldn't use two expert witnesses or witnesses that I had subpoenaed. And when I questioned him in court, he wouldn't, he said he would only accept expert witnesses that were licensed attorneys. When I asked him where his authority, he refused to give to me. When I wrote him through the city- Mr. Denan, that's your time. The court administrator, I'll finish this and I'll walk out. I want a meeting with you because we're getting close to the point where I have no choice. Your city, your, your city, your county, your court administrator asked for him to answer those two questions. He refused. Where are your responsibilities under the city charter on chapter 36 A and B being held to us, the public? Thank you're, you, you're sir. You're collecting millions of dollars from us and you can't do it legally right now. Thank and you. I can't take, why did you just give me two minutes, four minutes, but why, why don't you come, and let me come and meet with you? Sir, that's your four minutes. Thank you for your comments. My four, what, what four minutes? You said it isn't city business. Sir. I have shown you, you haven't shown me it isn't city business. Sir, I, your time is up. This why, isn't a dialogue. Your time is up, sir. Well, yeah, but you, you keep saying, show me the law where you cannot see me. You are responsible. You're city manager, city attorney. Sir, you're your time is up. Well, you're is almost getting up, too, because you need Thank to you. comply with the law. Thank you. All right, we've got presentations, recognition of Sherwood High School students for academic achievement. Joe. 
Okay, Mayor and Council, this is a continuation, and uh, there's many people in the room that may not realize that we do this every summer. Um, we did this at the last meeting, and we are doing this again tonight. We have some folks that RSVP'd, and we're going to have the Council come up, uh, come down, and congratulate folks. I'm going to announce their names, and then after we're done, I have other names of students that achieved high academic achievement that I want to read their names. They may or may not be here but we do this every summer. And, uh, and so like Joe said, this is our second session because we have so many amazing students here in the city of Sherwood. And so I'm gonna invite council to come down and let's congratulate these great students. And as you guys are coming down, as I said uh, last month, I do apologize if I got any of the names incorrect. <laughs> Some are a little bit more difficult than others, so. And one more bit of information. These are all students that received a 4.0 GPA for the 2016-17 school year, so. First on our list that RSVP tonight is Blake Asselford. Is Blake here? Ava, I believe it's Bowie. 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 Mira Bowie. 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 I thought you said it was Bowie. <laughs> Madison Brown. William Burgess. <laughs> Skylar Deitman. <laughs> Madison Langan. I get this one wrong. Madeline Lesseteur. <laughs> Dallin Marker. <laughs> Elsie McBride. Emily Pinnell. <laughs> Justine Price. <laughs> Annika Tuggy. Jennifer Villapendo. George Westover. Aiden Whitman Rinks. And the last that RSVP'd is Muriel Wilkinson. Yeah, go ahead. I might have to dig. So um, we are willing to dig uh, through the rest of the list, but we are going to be reading it. Is there anyone here who just forgot to RSVP but is here? We'd like to recognize them first while we're, council's still up here. Anybody? Okay, all right. Council, we can return and Joe's gonna finish it off.
So as you can see, this is a very big stack, which is quite amazing. I'm always amazed at how good the students do in this community. So, um, first, I'm, uh, this stack is Luke Onderud, Brady Agrinoff, Elizar, Elizar Aguilera, Megan Allen, Colin Anderson, Dane Basinger, Mason Bond, Emily Boynton, Sawyer Brundage, Danielle Calderon, Delaney Chase, Caden Christensen, Jennifer Christensen, Quinn Christensen, Elizabeth Chikoski, Abigail Corden, Paige Cushing, Harrison Dahl, Haven Dahl, Isaac Day, Addison DeBoer, Catherine DeVries, Michael Dinsdale, Peter Dinsdale, John Dotson, Allison Douglas, Anna Drummer or Dummer, Abigail Eisenweiss, Addison Enger, Allie Etherington, Isaac Evans, Peyton Everly, Burke Faber, Rachel Fasano, Grace Gary, Sharavat Gar, Alice Hall, Haley Hamilton, James Hansen, Sophia Harnu Spradley, Nathan Hossman, Tyler Hicks, Lucas Ho, Grace Holland, Kayla Homer, Aaliyah Jacobs, Emma Jacobs, Rachel Jensen, Claire Johnson, Caitlin Johnson, Takumi Kamerzel, Kalista Carr, Madison Carr, Chloe Lee, Helen Leon, Malia Livingston, Maria Long, thank you, Chief, Ashley Ma, Brenna Mawini, Rebecca Mifflin, Connor McDonald, Bridget McShane, Carrie Uen, Nguyen, Nee Nguyen, Kendall Nielsen, Cassidy Olson, Kiana O'Sullivan, Mary Adele Parrish, Madison Pastores, Adele Patterson, Gavin Pham, Allison Pluskwelik, Victor Polan Polanco, Jared Porter, Annika Prigleditch, Jerilyn Pringle, Benjamin Rome, Angelina Russell, Josephine Ruchman, Ruchman, Lauren Scarvey, Matthew Shanton, Jack Shapinsky, Josie Sylvester, Peyton Shannon, Abby Smith, Linda Lynn Spaeth, Brandon Spouse Will, Hunter Stewart, Mickey Stoller, Brady Tershin, Lan Tran, Marisa Valdez, Anna Vanderkamp, Precious Vang, Maeve Weinsek, Connie Williamson, Josephine Wilson, Samuel Windham, and last but not least, Josephine Weirin. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. And so some have already um, figured it out because, you know, these are 4.0 students, that we have snacks in the back if anyone would like to join the reception that we have for all of the students that came. But we want to congratulate everyone. That is quite an impressive list. And um, that is high achievement here in the city of Sherwood. And so we want to give those students the credit they are due. So um, thank you, Joe, for, for reading those. I appreciate it. Uh, new business. 
Resolution 2017-064, authorizing the city manager to send notice to the YMCA to prevent the existing operating agreement from automatically renewing. Josh Soper. Thank you, Thank you, Mayor and Councilors. Uh, as you're aware, the City and the YMCA of the Columbia Willamette are currently parties to an operating agreement, and the initial term of that operating agreement ends on October 31st of 2020. The agreement also provides that unless one party or the other provides notice at least one year in advance of the end date of a term of that agreement, it will automatically renew for an additional five-year term. Uh, during the course of the agreement today, both parties would agree that they've had some difficulty with the terms of that agreement uh, being difficult to administer and not being satisfactory to the parties. And so, as you're also aware, uh, the council is currently in the process of conducting an RFP to evaluate options for the future operation of that facility. The YMCA is one of the contenders in that process. And regardless of the outcome of that process, uh, it will be necessary to terminate that agreement. Uh, if the YMCA is selected as the preferred proposer and a contract is negotiated with them and they are selected to operate the facility, it'll be under a new contract, not the existing contract. If it's a different proposer, again, we'll need to terminate that contract so that the different uh, operator can come in. So staff is recommending, and this resolution would accomplish directing the city manager to send notice to terminate that contract. Okay, thank you, Josh. Council? So if the RFP vote were to be a tie and that next resolution didn't get passed, but we cancel this contract and we didn't come to any solution by November 22nd when the RFPs expire, where would that leave us? You'll still have an operator until October 31st of 2018. So you have until that time to re resolve what to do with the, the facility. Questions, Council? Do I have a motion? I move that we adopt uh, Resolution 2017-064. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Council. Resolution 2017-065, authorizing the city manager to negotiate with recreation center proposers in ranking order. John? Thank you, Chair and Councilors. Uh, so this is the, the item pertaining to the RFP uh, evaluation process. Um, as you know, we've been conducting this RFP process. Can you speak up, please? Yes, sir. Sorry, I, I don't control how the microphone picks my voice up. Um, is it picking up now? Yes. OK. Can you hear me in the back? Can you hear me in the back? There you go. Okay. <laughs> Just bring I'm going to move it a little closer. There you How go. How about that? Okay. So each member of the city council acting as the selection review committee has individually scored each of the proposers based on the criteria that were set out in the RFP. And it's my understanding that uh, some of those, at least some counselors would like to discuss the scores present the uh, thoughts behind their scores at this time. So do you want to do that now and then move on with the rest of the process? That's fine with me. OK, council. I can go ahead and start it off. Um, so let me see here. So we had, uh, as everyone knows, I'll maybe give a quick overview. We did have five um, proposals. We brought three back in for interviews. Um, I'll just discuss my top three um, very briefly. Discuss the um, YMCA is who I uh, selected as my first um, option for negotiating a new contract. Health Fitness uh, was second, and THPRD third. Um, to briefly explain why um, the YMCA scored the highest on my scorecard, um, looking at the financials, um, I felt that um, the overall surplus that the YMCA would uh, is proposing over the five-year pro forma versus the uh, other two that I've mentioned coming in at a deficit over the next, uh, or a loss um, over the next five years was clearly a plus in the YMCA category. Another big proponent um, or 
positive factor for the YMCA was both the programming and the operations plan that the YMCA has. Um, I think they provide services to this community that are the best fit for the community. They have experience with the community and their programming fits with the community. Uh, the Health Fitness, I believe, also is a strong organization, um, but as I mentioned, the financials, uh, I did not feel they were quite as strong as the YMCA. And I do not feel that they offered the same type of community-oriented uh, programming that the YMCA offers. THPRD, um, while they have a strong following in the Beaverton area, some of you who may have seen the interview with THPRD uh, will note that we would not be included in their network of um, facilities. We would be a standalone operation, which I felt um, did not provide a very big benefit to the citizens of Sherwood. And from a financial standpoint, if you took the time to read the proposals, you would see that their membership fees were quite a bit higher than what the YMCA currently offers. So I'll, I'll be brief. Um, my first choice is the YMCA. So I'm going to ask the audience not to comment or make any kind of voice. This is our time as council to deliberate. This is not time for comments or any kind of noise. Okay, council. Sure. Okay. So I uh, scored as well. Um, I probably took a much longer than I thought I was going to to score, but I came up with a personal scoring sheet that really helped me greatly. And I spent about 16 to 20 hours totally on all the proposals. Um, but I feel really good about my scoring. I came up with uh, the YMCA one, um, Health Fitness second, and THPRD as number three. Um, and I will tell you that there were some excellent points with both YMCA and with Health Fitness. I will tell you that. Um, Obviously, the, the real draw for me on the why, um, they have uh, great people, great staff. That's not to say that health fitness would not keep them if, if health fitness does move forward. But, but the why um, absolutely is a good steward of the budget, and we're not costing task taxpayers money to continue to run that facility. Um, we're looking at a, a lot of... Um, reaching for money over the next few years. And I hope that everyone um, pays attention to our city budget that way and educate yourself on where those monies come from because it's really important um, as a citizen to be involved in your community. I, I, I think it's a responsibility of everybody. Um, but getting back to my uh, the, why I chose the YMCA also, um, they have some really great things going for them. They've got great programming. Uh, they're very community oriented, as you, as um, many of you here know. Um, and I think that they've got a good structure in place. They reach across nationally, uh, and I really like that. Um, Health Fitness also has a great structure. Obviously, they are an unknown, but they do start off um, in the facility with some deficit over the next probably three years. They start uh, showing a revenue at the fourth year. Um, their management fee is 192000 That's it. They might be a for-profit, but I want everyone to know that that is their profit. It's 192000 um, uh, so they came in a close second for me. THPRD, although they sound great, they, they really weren't prepared to figure out any kind of transition. Um, they didn't really have a lot to offer in terms of how they would transition a facility. And like Councillor Garland said, they, um, we wouldn't have any reciprocity in the THPRD system if they ran the facility here. So. Um, my scores are available, so there you go. Next, thanks. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready. Okay. Anyone can go that would like to. So I um, scored 
Scored Health Fitness first and YMCA second. And I heard that. Um, for me, the they didn't. The YMCA did not call it a management fee. They had another name for it, but it was over the hundred and ninety-two thousand. So that played into my financials. But for me, the um, health fitness really just brought a lot to the table. I didn't anticipate liking health fitness. Um, I was before we got any proposals, before I read anything, I was Team THPRD. Um, I love Tualatin Hills Park and Recreation. I drive to it all the time, and I was very surprised um, to see that I had ranked them last and um, somewhat disappointed because I was excited about having Tualatin Hills Park and Rec here in Sherwood, um, but they just didn't, they just weren't um, up to the task, I think. It was a new venture for them, and they were not... Um, in my opinion, ready to, to do that venture. Uh, health Fitness, on the other hand, their um, written proposal was very easy to read, very clear. Um, their interview was spot on. Every question we asked them, they had an answer for. Um, their financials, I had a hard time with the financials. Um, two very uh, prestigious groups, two people, with, two groups with a whole lot of experience um, had very different financials and it made me wonder why. Um, and when we questioned the YMCA about why, they didn't clearly tell us why their numbers were so different from these other two entities that have been in the business for more than 20 years. Um, the Y has plenty of experience as well and um, the numbers just didn't add up and um, that played into my uh, ranking as well. Um, health fitness clearly um, had their financials laid out. It was a very clear number. It was an easy, um, easy to understand financial uh, proposal. It was, I think, easy for the city staff to understand and work and understand what their job will be. I think that that wasn't as clear with the YMCA. Um, the YMCA in my, um, in, through the interview, to me, the YMCA felt like um, they really wanted to run the show their way with as little input from the city as possible. And uh, what I have heard is that people want the city to be more involved. Um, I don't, also, also I heard they want um, the facility to be expanded. Um, I know those are different things, but I also believe that Health Fitness is more equipped to manage an expansion, and so that also played into my overall experience with the interview process. They have um, gone through expansions of, of facilities before. They've run city facilities before. This is not new for them. Um, they talked a lot about community involvement, talked about having the police officers and the firemen um, doing events at their um, centers across the country. Um, health Fitness was very clearly in it for the city and the citizens of Sherwood. And and I believed that from what they said, from what they provided to us. And um, the YMCA, to me, they didn't have a lot of answers. And when, when pushed, um, they didn't answer the questions that we asked them. So that's why they got uh, the second place for me. Okay, thank you, Council President. Councilor Robinson? Um, yes. Um, my goal in um, evaluating the proposals was that I would like to see um, more people benefit and use the facility that we do have. And I understand that it needs to be expanded. I'm in support of expanding it, and I um, hope that we can achieve that shortly. Um, but separate from that, because this isn't considered in part of this process, um, we undertook a very extensive process. And we have spent the last five months um, really looking at every avenue that we could. And, uh, and we gave everyone the opportunity in the last five months to come to our meetings, have comment. Um, we did a town hall. It was wonderful. Um, and... Um, we've had executive sessions, we've had work sessions, we've had um, all kinds of 
opportunities for people to let us know. We've been at the Music on the Green um, a couple times for people to come up and ask us questions. Um, so we really have taken our time in trying to gather all the information and make a good decision. All of us are here on council to represent the public. Um, we might have individual um, feelings, but my goal, again, is to um, pick the right provider that is ultimately going to have uh, and benefit more of our Sherwood residents. Um, I then uh, had an eye towards the harsh reality that the city of Sherwood does not have another um, person who can basically handhold um, the operator of this facility. It would be nice if we could. It'd be nice if we had someone who was there full time that could help with decision making and programs and an operational plan and things of that nature. But we, we really don't have that staff. And poor Kristen uh, is going to be in, ch in charge of our thing, along with many other uh, responsibilities that she has. Um, so I want I wanted to find someone who um, we could really rely on, and um, and not be really con you know not scared about what they're going to do. Um, and with that in mind. Um, and my initial kind of my initial kind of um, view of the scenario, when we first got the proposals from the proposers, is I was thinking you know probably the YMCA first and maybe TRPD second and then um, you know this outside company from out of state, and I was really surprised to learn um, how things morphed into a much different scenario for me. And um, when I um, listened to the interviews, or first of all, I spent almost all weekend looking over things again a second time, all the proposals, all the emails, all of the uh, requests for new information and the answers to that information, the written proposals, and a transcript of um, the interviews. So. When I looked at everything in a big picture and I compared those three entities, um, I really became excited when I listened to the interview with Health Fitness. Um, they have experience in the industry. They um, have experience in transitioning from another uh, entity moving out of a facility and then coming in. Um, and I really think they will surprise people about how they handle managing this facility. And I'd, I'd like to ask the public, uh, both here and at home on TV, to really give them a chance um, if they're selected. So um, what was really disturbing to me was the YMCA's um, politicizing and emotional ploys to get us to vo vote in their favor. Um, Although I love the input from the, um, the citizens, I really enjoyed that, and I, I read every one of them. Um, and it actually was very interesting because when you read the emails, I would say the overwhelming majority of the emails, hundreds of emails, um, most of them actually say, I love your facility. It's so wonderful. I love the programming. I love my teacher. Okay, well, none of those three things are going to change. So it really doesn't matter who is. They don't have to change. Okay, we need to be quiet in the audience or I will empty the room. It is time for deliberation, not for comment. Thank you. I expected more of the YMCA um, to have a better written proposal. They focused a lot on the YMCA um, Columbia Willamette. Um, they emphasized how long they've been in Portland, um, but I don't really care about Portland, and I don't really care about, um, you know, the parent company. What I care about is Sherwood, and I care about the local facility, and that facility has, and that operator has had 20 years to operate that facility, and they have had 20 years to prove to us that 
they've run a facility. When I first came on council, they were at a loss, people. They were losing money and they were not as successful as everyone thinks they are. So it really bothered me that uh, Mr. Burris took it upon himself to uh, send out a flyer that was full of misinformation and downright false information. And I am very upset that this became a political issue. My job is, as one of the email uh, people that, that wrote to me, keep the emotion and politics out of this decision. All right, keep it a business decision, and that's how I treated it. This is a business decision on behalf of the city. And we all have varying views of these three people, and I, I applaud them all for making an effort to become a better operator um, than what we've had in the past. Um, so my ultimate scoring was health fitness first, uh, THPRD second, and YMCA third. Councilor Young? Yeah. So I took a lot of time on these as well, and I'm kind of like Councilor Kuiper, a data geek, and had my own spreadsheet and um, looked at the facts of the RFP and made sure everybody answered everything that was in the request and um, scored them based on that. Um, I read every 315 email that I got. I responded to every 315 email that I got. Of those, six were opposed to the YMCA. The majority were in favor of the YMCA. But that's not what I was, what we are to base our um, recommendation on. It's how did they respond to the, to the RFP. Health Fitness put together a great plan and they were a, a contender with the YMCA, in my opinion. I felt the YMCA's um, proposal was, was great as well. And so they would have been equal, fairly equal in my book, until the financial part. The financials make the difference. And I don't see where the city could ever enter into a contract with somebody that's showing a possible loss, most likely a loss in, for five years, without knowing where the funding source is gonna come from. We don't have that money in our budget. Where is it coming from? But we're gonna enter into a contract if they were, if Health Fitness is the one who would to be chosen. I just, um, so the financials was the tipping point um, for that. And I do feel that the YMCA has a good record of their financials, which is why I trusted their numbers. Um, I, another big, com uh, component to me was the community aspect. I did not get the feeling that health fitness was going to provide the community feeling that everybody loves about the YMCA. I listened to the interviews again, um, and when pressed on the community question that Councilor Kuiper was asking, they didn't understand what she was getting at as far as the community feeling within the facility, not working out in the city, not being a sponsor in an event but how they draw the community together in the facility. So I didn't feel they understood what we were trying to get at on that. Um, another point with the YMCA was the um, reciprocity where memberships are, can be used around the country. That doesn't happen with any of the other uh, proposers. And the other big thing for me was the YMCA in their proposal said that if and when we ever do an expansion, they're willing to help again fund that expansion. That will not happen with health fitness. That will not happen with THPRD. But that will happen with YMCA. And they've already said, and they have a track record to show it. They've helped raise funds for um, expansions. So with that, um, YMCA was my top vote. Health Fitness was my second choice. And THPRD was my third choice. Um, I didn't feel THPRD put together a very good proposal. And I didn't think their interview was that great. They didn't seem excited about the opportunity. It almost felt, felt like they were just throwing their hat in to throw it in there. So thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank all of council for working so hard on this. Uh, as was stated, we spent months and months and months going over reams of information and then interviews. And normally during the summertime, 
Um, I like to give the council a little bit of a break. And instead of having two set meetings a month, uh, we try to go down to one. Uh, that turned into about four, five this time around um, because of these proposals. And I just want to say that this council has worked very hard uh, at really addressing the question. And that question was a question that was posed because of an ending of a contract. It was not posed because someone was on a witch hunt or anything else. This is a business. This is a business decision. So the contract is ending, and so we're going through the process. Why are we going through it right now? Because now is the time that the contract is ending. And so now is the time that we must do it. And so I want to give huge kudos to all of the counselors for really spending um, a lot of time going through all of this information, asking great questions, looking for those answers, and really, really wanting the very, very best recreation opportunities for all of our citizens. That's the job. The job is for us to represent all of our citizens, not the citizens of Portland, not the citizens of Tiger, not the citizens of Newburgh, nope, the citizens of the city of Sherwood. And I want to congratulate every counselor for really digging in and doing that when it really was not comfortable to do so. In the, in the reams of emails, as has been mentioned, that's not, a pro that's not part of the process. Um, I think that the town hall was a good opportunity for us to gather information, and I think that it was great to hear from the citizens about all of their ideas about recreation in the future, because that's how we go somewhere, is we listen and we hear, what, where are we going? We've spent almost $10 million in our taxes to build this great facility. And so the only question is, we have this wonderful facility, now who will operate it? That's the question, providing services. So the job of the city is to provide services. The job of the city is to take our tax dollars and to provide services. And I've talked about this before when someone brought up if the audience could be quiet, please. Thank you. Um, if someone brought up that, you know, the art center is costing money. Well, does that mean that the art center isn't valuable? Of course it's costing money. It's an asset. It's a city amenity. City amenities tend to cost taxpayer dollars because we're providing services. So in the same way, I was not daunted by the health fitness proposal that with their unbelievable proposal of options and the value that they were going to give to the citizens of the city of Sherwood, I was not surprised that that might come at a cost. Well, yes, it might. There, there might be a cost, but that's why we have taxpayer dollars to provide services. We're not here for a net zero. We're here to provide the very best services. Quality service is number one value on the city of Sherwood. Right there, our mission, city of Sherwood mission, quality of service, number one. So that's, that's part of what I was looking at. I was looking at what is the value that we are going to receive. The interviews for the health fitness was amazing. Uh, their proposal was very, very professional. They answered every single question that we asked. We asked very pointed questions, and never did I hear, we'll get back to you. So they were my number one choice. Now, I know that there was a lot of interest in the Tualatin Hills Park and Rec. Um, it was a very interesting proposal because uh, a lot of people have grown up around, as, as Council President Harris spoke of, around their system. But again, that's not the way that I looked at the proposal. I looked at the actual proposal. Their proposal was also excellent in my opinion. I felt that they also, although not experienced like health fitness, which is why they could not be my number one, uh, they had a plan on, we have a plan to provide great service. And so they were my number two pick. The reason that the YMCA fell below is when I asked questions.
questions. And I said, what about this or what about that? Or another counselor said, what about this or what about that? Their common response was, we'll get back to you, we'll get back to you, which is okay because, of course, there were lots and lots of very specific questions to the YMCA because they had been providing services. So I think that that was fair, that they had an opportunity to get back to us. But when they did get back to us in answering our questions, the answer had a non-disclosure clause on it. Um, okay, why, why can't we talk about your answers? And so staff had to, again, go back to the YMCA and say, I don't understand. Well, um, we need to be able to disclose your answers because we're providing all of the information that all of the applicants are giving us to all of our citizens so that everybody gets all of the same information. And so there was a period of time and then they did come back and say, oh, okay, we'll, we'll disclose this and that and that. They call themselves a partner. The health fitness calls himself the client. I'm ready to be a client. I'm, I'm ready to have the branding on the facility be the city of Sherwood. The citizens of the city of Sherwood paid for it, and I'm ready for the citizens of the city of Sherwood to reap the benefits of a great <coughs> facility, not a branding for another business entity. So that's where my rankings went. Josh, did you have? Thank you, and please let me know if you can't hear me in the back or if it's too loud and distorting. I'm not sure what's going on with my mic. I don't usually have to get quite this close to it. Um, so as we previously discussed in the work session, uh, the next step, what we did after we received all of your scores is we compiled them uh, to try to develop an overall score for the city council. And the methodology we used for that that we're uh, proposing is to assign four points to each first place ranking. Each counselor ranked a operator first would get give the operator four points, two points for each second place ranking, and one point for each third place ranking. And Joe has a tabulated spreadsheet to show that. So as you can see, coded in yellow are the health fitness uh, rankings, blue for YMCA and green for THPRD. Each column corresponds to a member of the city council, and the rows correspond to the first, second, and third ranking. And then at the bottom there, you have the total number of points for each proposer based on that scoring methodology. So the overall ranking would be health fitness first with 18 points, YMCA second with 16 points, and THPRD third with eight points. The resolution that's before you tonight uh, does a number of things. I'm gonna read this list just to make sure that we get everything, but the, the main thing it does is it establishes this ranking based on this methodology and creates that ranked order of health fitness first, YMCA second, and THPRD third, and directs the city manager to negotiate with the proposers in that order. And that's, that's an important uh, piece of the, of the puzzle there, is that it's, it's not a you choosing one and negotiating with them and that's it. It's you negotiate with the first ranked proposer and if that negotiation is successful, you bring that contract back to city council. If it's not successful, then you move on to the second ranked and then the third ranked proposer until you get hopefully a, a contract to bring back to council. The length of time for the negotiations is set at 30 calendar days with a possible extension of up to 30 additional days in the discretion of the city manager. It also directs the city manager to report back to council and seek additional direction in the event that additional information becomes available, which the city manager believes could affect the selection review committee, that's you, it's evaluation, or uh, two, the city manager believes that it may be appropriate to reject all proposals or three, an agreement with the top ranked proposer is not reached within the time frame, but the city manager believes that allowing additional time may be appropriate. Otherwise, uh, if the time allowed for negotiations runs out without an agreement being reached, the resolution directs the city manager to proceed with negotiating the next ranked proposer, as I discussed, and so on using that same procedure as for the top ranked proposer. Finally, and as I said, but to reiterate, the resolution makes it clear that the final approval or rejection 
decision for any resulting agreement it rests with the City Council and directs the City Manager to bring those agreements back to Council for consideration. Thank you, Josh. Council? Do I have a motion? I'll move that we adopt resolution 2017-065. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. No. Okay, that's a tie. So I'll hear from the nays. What's your opposition to accepting the ranking as per the process? Well, I just think we could discuss this a little bit more. I'd like to do that um, for those of you. Yeah. So um, this was a very uh, close ranking for me, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the RFP lays out the rankings and how it's supposed to be. Um, I don't know. I just thought I'd open this up to the other counselors to talk a little bit more about it the mayor and about what it means. Um, right now I have a north arrow that is spinning. I like to keep my north arrow straight. And it's difficult for me as a counselor who spent a lot of time scoring these proposals uh, and having the YMCA come out on top of that uh, score uh, and then being faced with this where you have an RFP that indicates the top score has to be chosen. So I, I want everyone to know that this is um, something that I've been spinning around since I've learned of this and we just found out about this probably about two hours ago in an executive session about what the rankings are. Um, what would that be like if the numbers were switched? If the YMCA was 18 and Health Fitness was 16, would that be fair as well um, if, if the vote went the other way? And so I, I can appreciate the position that, that puts me in personally and the rest of the folks that have got the YMCA on the top of their list. And I just wanted to hear from other counselors about their feelings on on that okay so um i didn't hear anything about a dispute with the process because what we're what we're approving is the process and so we've we've gone through a process and these are the rankings and they are tabulated as was presented by council and by staff and your top choice didn't win okay that's not a reason to not accept the process so i'm going to have to hear a reason for for me to understand what the problem is with the process because that's what the that's what the motion is indicating that we are right. accepting the process understood not, not not saying we love the conclusion but that we are accepting the process we have gone through in order to get to the conclusion I'm opening it up for discussion. I'd like to hear more discussion. Okay. On the conclusion or on the process? Because that's what we're voting on. Um, we're used to. The conclusions, can we talk about that? A well, bit? We, we can, but I'm not seeing the validity of it or the usefulness of it, except just to, we know what the rankings are. We've all given our reasoning for the ranking. Right. And so um, I'm not understanding the the need to belabor the point of the ranking themselves. What we are doing. I think it's important that we okay. talk about it. All right. I don't mind hearing. I mean, I just, I. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. I understand. I just think ranked? it's important to talk about it. Are you wanting to know more why we ranked what we ranked? Is that what you're asking? Mm. Yeah, and I'd like to hear a little bit more discussion. I think this is a very important decision, um, and I think it's is an important decision. It's a community. We, we are working for the community, and I think it's important that we have a little bit more discussion about it before we vote on the resolution. It is. Okay. 
So what we're gonna what we're gonna need you to do is not yell out. This is not time for public comment, and so you. This is not time for public comment. There's been lots and lots of opportunity for that. This is time for council. If if you if you have another outburst, you will be asked to leave the room. This is council's time. Uh, Chief. Chief, we are going to have a five minute recess. I'd like you to remove people who are being disruptive. Thank you. Five minute recess. All right, Josh, I'll, I'll resume. I'll open our city council back in and Josh. Yes, yeah, so I just want to remind everybody of the rules for meetings in the city of Sherwood. It says that any person who fails to comply with reasonable rules of conduct or who causes a disturbance may be asked or required to leave and upon failure to do so becomes a trespasser and will be escorted out. Thank you, Josh. Um, I am really disappointed. One of the things you you can be quiet now, or or you've you've heard our city attorney and you've heard our chief, and I'll give one warning and then I'll ask you to leave, uh, because here in the city of Sherwood, we disagree without being disagreeable, and I am appalled at this display. It is okay to disagree, that's all right. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. And that includes the members here of your city council who have worked very, very hard and given their very, very best as citizen volunteers. There is no reason to yell out or attack or belittle because you happen to have a different opinion. This is not a rally. This is a city council meeting in our wonderful city of Sherwood. And I'm embarrassed for us. We need to have an opportunity to do the work. And I know that every single person sitting here has done the work and they are trying very, very hard and giving up time with their families and giving up time with their kids to provide the very best decision that they can provide. Now, you can agree with their decision at the end of the day, or you can disagree with their decision at the end of the day, but you don't have the right to run them down the rail for decision making, because guess what? A decision does have to be made. That's the job. We make a decision. And we're faced with this decision that must be made. And I congratulate all of the counselors for facing this tough decision. Because <clears throat> it's hard to disagree with your neighbor. But disagree sometimes you must. Sometimes you agree and sometimes you don't, and that's okay. And guess what, we're gonna move on after this decision is made. And are you gonna be able to sit next to someone sitting up here and look them in the face next time you're sitting at the park, playing with your kids, walking the dog at the dog park? Are you gonna be able to look them in the face? Because I wanna be able to. I wanna treat people with dignity and respect whether they agree with me or whether they don't. So we're going to return. So I'd like to speak if I could. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and I just want to iterate. My questions are to counsel for to spur discussion, not to create drama. This was a very tough deliberation for us in, as individuals when we reviewed these proposals and the interviews. These are decisions we don't take lightly. and. My offering to open up a discussion was for everyone to listen to some of the deliberations that we're having. That's what that was about. So I have to uh, second what the mayor's saying because it, it, it definitely does not help. Thanks. Go ahead. So I would like to speak. I, I obviously did uh, at this point vote no on moving this resolution forward. Um, as anybody can count, we have six counselors on our council right now. We split three to three. I would like to throw out the idea that we delay this decision until the November election 
when we vote in a seventh counselor, who would be the tie-breaking vote on this decision. Well, that sounds fun. Let's have another Sherwood election. We're having an that election. That we can be November proud of. Already. That 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 sounds like fun. That no more outbursts, sir, in the blue shirt. I'll leave. All right. Bye. You get more output from Bye. the public. So I think your, your that we sir, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Um I think placing all of the decision on whoever is elected as the tiebreaker <laughs> sounds <laughs> horrible. And I don't know who in the world would even want to run for that job. That sounds terrible. Also, they would have to spend hours and hours and hours and hours going through reams and reams and reams of information. They were not part of any of the interviews, so they'd have to just watch the interview. But if they had any questions, they wouldn't be able to pose any of the questions. So delaying to me, Councillor Garland, is simply saying, I don't like the conclusion. So I ran for election uh, to council back in November of last year knowing that the YMCA was going to be a major decision, if not the major decision of my term on council. I've read, read through all the documentation. I had no problem doing that. Uh, as you've said earlier, our counselors here are all dedicated to putting in the work, have put in the work. I trust that whoever would run for, uh, for election in November would also do that, especially knowing the, the weight of what they would be getting themselves into. I don't have any hesitation to let that person make that decision for themselves. There. Oh, well, yeah. Yes, oh, Councilor sorry. Robinson. Um, my, um, my opinion on delaying this is very strong, and that is a big opposition. Uh, for the reason and respect of my fellow counselors, um, because it, whatever that f seventh person would vote on, um, you're really putting the six of us in a very bad position. And the six of us will have to um, reconsider all of the materials, review all of the interviews, see if they want to interview again. And quite frankly, I'm sick of, of delay, delay, delay. I, I do, this was a very tough decision. We are two points away from first and second place. Clearly, both of these entities have a lot to offer to the city. We ranked them according to the process, and none of our counselors knew our individual ranking until this evening at 6 o'clock. So it's not like we conspired together. Let's vote this. Let's vote this. Let's vote you and copy each other's thing. If you see our, our decision-making process, they're very different. And if you look, um, I mean, I had nine pages of notes on the very criteria um, that we had to rank these people by. I spent a lot of time, and I know that I am not the only one that spent that much time. We all did it, and I, quite frankly, don't want to do it again. Six months down the road when somebody else is involved. And I, I, I'm a huge opposition to delaying this any further. Kelsey Young? So well, I uh, agree with Sean on this. When we started this process, we did have seven councils, counselors, and unfortunately, Dan had to resign, which doesn't stop the work of council just because we have six. But um, this is, again, one of the major decisions that most of us, a lot of us, will probably make on our term as council. And it's a heated decision in our community. And I think having a seventh person, this decision is being made on second choices. This decision is not being made on first choices. And um, our first choices are, are tied. And um, so as much as we don't want to delay, I would be okay with it. Well, of course you would. Because <laughs> of right. your ranking. I mean, I, that, that's my problem with, I haven't heard that you have had a problem with the process, which is what we're approving. That's what the motion is. The motion is not saying I like who the ranking ended up bringing to the top. It's saying I approve 
of the process. Josh, at any point, um, did any of the counselors complain about the process to you? Who created the process? It was a staff creation. Um, I, I think I came up with the idea initially, consulted with Joe and Katie as far as the specifics of how to structure it and to avoid. The, the idea was to avoid a tie that we could not break. And so by assigning points to the first, second, and third, and weighting the first ranked uh, the highest, and then second and third like that, uh, we hoped to avoid a unbreakable tie. But it, it, was, a, it was a staff proposed process. So we've, we've gone through a process. Everyone is, has done the work of the process. The process was created by staff, not by the mayor or any of the counselors. It was created by staff. And now we are here, and here is the conclusion of the process. So I still haven't heard anyone say anything that convinces me that we should not approve the resolution that approves the process. Well, and I want to point out this is not this is not a decision to pick the why or pick fit health fitness. This is a decision to enter into negotiations for a contract. And if those negotiations fail with health fitness, then YMCA is right behind them. And that's okay. If it was switched, I would not delay this matter. If, if my vote wasn't um, the majority vote, um, I wouldn't be complaining and say, oh, I lost. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a longer delay process with the hopes that my vote will eventually win. I just, I just am very unhappy that um, we can't move, we, we should move forward with this resolution. I would like to reiterate that if this resolution were approved and a contract were negotiated, that contract comes back to this council for a decision on approval as well and would require a majority of council in order to approve that contract. And if that were not approved, then there, there would be no contract with that operator. And we'd have to move on to the next, next ranked operator. So I, I am very concerned. Are we going to play politics or are we going to follow the process? That's my concern. I think we should follow the process that's set forth on RFPs. I mean, this is a business decision, and I just think the resolution is to negotiate with the Recreation Center proposers in ranked order. I think I don't see the issue. It's not what this community wants. Uh, I'm afraid that you weren't here, but we're not allowing outbursts, and so you're going to need to be quiet or you're going to have to leave. So do I, did, did you have enough discussion? What, because uh, you were the one who wanted to discuss. So I want to make sure that you. Okay, so do we have a motion? Please stay with your no votes. Mm -hmm. We think it's important. Thank you. So do we have a motion, no, council? No, I just have to leave. The mayor said so. Oh my gosh. Wow. I move that we adopt resolution 2017 065. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. So, once again, I'm not hearing a problem with the process. So, do we have. A suggestion? Do you want to move that we negotiate? What about Councillor Kuiper? Is there anything in the resolution you would like to change so that it's acceptable? Look at the resolution. I think Councillor Garland and I did make suggestions. No, about the resolution, she said. Oh, no, not about the resolution, but.
So Josh, what are the implications of waiting for a November election? In terms of um, proposers and the proposals uh, waiting beyond, I think the deadline was what, November 22nd? Oh, the proposals expire on November 22nd. Um, we could certainly ask the proposers to extend the validity of their proposals beyond that date, uh, but they don't have to. Um, there, there, there's also some risk in that um, we have a process that presented a result, and if that result a grieved proposer would presumably not be happy with that. And so you could potentially see a, a protest of that result. Have you ever seen that happen? I, I haven't, there's a lot of things I haven't seen happen that, that are <laughs> happening tonight. <so. laughs> well, I'd like to, I'd like to ask my, the three counselors that are not willing to pass this resolution, why is it that we don't want to follow the process that we followed? Just because YMCA didn't get selected? I mean, they lost by two points. It's close. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why we are not moving forward with the top ranked people. The legal process laid out for us, right? I think my response to that is still the same as when we started this process, we had a council of seven. And now we have a council of six making the tie more likely. No, we didn't. Councillor King never was involved in this process. He was. He, he and did then not. He, he was, and then he chose not to start in on the interviews because he knew he was leaving. Well, the interviews are the process, so. Well, he was at the beginning of the process. I'd say the interviews are probably a pretty big part of the process. It was. I think that changed the RFP process. Mm -mm. I mean. I still don't know why we're not following the process. That's, I, that's my question. I mean, question. there's a winner. There's a clear winner. So why are we not following the process? Because I'd hate to get sued and have to uh, try to defend that as a city and waste lots of city. I mean, I didn't hear off. anybody, excuse me, sorry, no, Mayor. Okay. Go ahead. I didn't hear anybody complain about the process until 7 o'clock today. No one said if it turns out to be health, fitness, uh, I'm going to object. I mean, that's exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. That's true. There are 19,000 people in the city of Sherwood, almost. Maybe a little more now. Mm -hmm. 19,000 people. How many people are in this room? 40, maybe? How many letters do we get? What'd you say? A couple hundred couple hundred, 19,000 citizens are who we represent. Well, the process, no matter what, it, the process isn't, that was, that's a, it's a legal RFP process, right? Am I, I think misunderstanding still something? Following the process. Does our RFP well, specifically state that, that we were going to rank them in this order? Did the RFP specifically talk about this ranking system, or did that come in after the RFP in was submitted? No one objected. It, it establishes that we have to have a ranking, and it has to be based on the criteria and the weighted criteria with those, the scores that we um, came so up the, with. So the criteria if there was were another the formula that we could apply to those scores. We could do that as long as it would maintain using those criteria in those weights. So the, so the RFP laid out the four categories with the points assigned to each of those categories with a 100 point total for written and for the uh, interview. It didn't talk about ranking of a four, two, and one system, correct, the RFP? It did not talk about four, two, and one. It just said but, that you will, you will okay. have a overall ranking is based on those scores. And, and if you took out this type of ranking and you ranked the proposals and the interviews just based on the raw scores, how would that come out? Same result. The same result. It did come out the same result, you and, mean? Uh, actually, let me grab that sheet. I have Okay. That. So are we in legal jeopardy based on not following the RFP 
if we do not follow this ranking system. We have the right under the RFP to cancel the RFP at any time, so we don't have to award a contract to anybody. But uh, if we do award a contract, it has to be based on the process, the criteria, the rankings. Okay. So if so we can you show us the rankings? Yes. Yeah, so if we add up all the individual scores, what I, what I have is an average score for each that, that gets you the same result. Uh, health fitness 173.75, YMCA 143.96, TH Parity 119.04. So nowhere in the RFP did it say that our ranking system, if there were a tie for our top choice, would use the second choice to basically break that tie. Right. It doesn't have to be the second choice. You could go by points, um, which I just read. Uh, there may be some other method, but I, I, can't, I can't think of what that would be. But didn't you just say in the RFP it said that you it would go by the ranking, correct, which is what you just read? You, do in you the just end, read the numbers of the ranking. You, in the end, have to have yeah. a ranked list that is based on the criteria. And, the weights. and that's what we have. Whether you so use this, you apply or two, not. Different, two right. different methodologies to try to get there. Same result. The same result. Same result. And, and Josh, would it be unre unusual for us to put in an RFP exactly how many points the first person's going to get and how many points the second one's going to get in our ranking system? You don't have to spell that out in the RFP, do you? Just the, just the criteria and how heavily they're weighted. That's okay. usually, that's all I've ever seen put in there. Okay. Well, the ultimate uh, end result is um, we're not going to have anybody operating the facility next October because we have already canceled the contract with the Y. Um, as soon as Joe gives them formal notice, um, based on our decision tonight, earlier, that the majority approved, the why, why's current contract will be exhausted and nobody will be running the facility and it will presumably close without an operator. Unless between now and October 31st, 2018, you select a new operator, there will be no operator effective October 31st, 2018. That's correct. So is, is that what council wants? Is is well, is no. that why you ran? To just make no decisions? We're just not going to make a decision. We're going to go through the process. It's going to be a clear, concise process set out by staff. We're going to follow it. We're going to come up with a conclusion. But if you don't like it, you're just going to vote against the process, even though you never complained about the process during the process. That just doesn't sound right to me. So besides the delay, what's your opposition on waiting for a seventh person? My opposition is we've gone through the process. I don't want to go through the process again. I, I've already gone through the process. And no matter what the conclusion, I would have voted for the process because that's what we went through this for. We're not voting again on which facility. We're voting to negotiate with the recreation center proposers in ranked order. No matter what that ranked order is, the resolution is to which I support. do that city business. I, I support continuing the work of council, whether I personally agree with the results or not. That's, that's the job. That's why it's not one person's decision. It's our decision, which according to the process, we should approve the process. Well, and you've also got two different outcomes that lead to the same result, same result. as a result of doing the process. So I think we're going to get sued. 
if we don't follow through with what we said we were going to do. Could we be told that we didn't follow the process if we waited for that seventh person on council to help break the tie? I mean, it's still part of the process. It, it's difficult to say um, what happens when you have a process, you follow it, you get a result, you delay, and then the result changes. It, it's difficult for me to imagine the proposer who's aggrieved by that not protesting that result. Um, Under legal terms, right? right. Because, not because, because they... There was a process and there was a result. And, and by protest, you mean someone's going to sue us. So, so a protest is, <laughs> protest is the, the That's legal your fancy term, legal term. Contracting law. Uh, first, it goes to the city for administrative review. If we can't resolve it, then it, it is a lawsuit. That's correct. It's hmm. a good point, Josh. So, Councilor Kuiper. I believe in the YMCA. I believe in the mission. I believe in their ability to be good stewards of our finances. But I believe in government more, and I believe in how the government functions. And I challenge every single person in this room to go onto the website, on the city website, and, and go to Citizens University. And you go to those classes and you learn about how government functions. I may not like it, and I don't want to be out there being the one who kicked out the why. But you know what? I believe in our government. And I believe and I trust the process. So um, if you want to pass the resolution and you want to bring that up, I'm, I, I, um, I'm a scientist, guys. And I believe in data. Do you have a motion, Councilor? I move we approve the, the resolution. So Second. I think we need to have it stated a little bit more clearly. Okay. Um, Someone go else ahead. can make the resolution. Ahead. I move that we approve resolution 2017-065. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Council. We are adjourned.